Dear friends and lovers of the old fight box, today we are going to talk about one truly horrible manuscript. As rumor has it, there are entire groups or clubs that base their training on this specific abomination. So please endure the following 20 minutes and reconsider. Why I despise the bloody Sigmund Ringeck manuscript. Well, that's a valid question, isn't it? It's mostly because of the early publications. Here we have a few examples. The very first one is Martin Wierstein's uh, publication from 1965. We have others by Christian Tobler from 2001 and the Lindholm Swert edition from 2003 and 2006 respectively. So these were available at a very early date when historical fencing was quite young. The Siegmund Ringeck manuscript is a much more manageable moniker than, for instance, the original shelf number, under which it is kept in the Sächsische Landesbibliothek in Dresden, uh, that is the State Library of Saxony, and the original number is C.487. So, yes, I think Siegmund Ringeck manuscript is a bit more convenient. But now let's have a look who the original author, Siegmund Ringeck, may have been. Siegmund Ringeck is a conveniently short name. Sadly, it's not entirely correct. Here is what it says in the manuscript itself. It says Siegmund Ein Ringeck. Here you can see the name again in the context of the entire page. In this section, it says that Siegmund Ein Ringeck was at the time the fencing master of the high-born prince and duke Lord Albert, Count Palatin of the Rhine. But let's see, I'm afraid it's going to be a bit more complicated. Here, for instance, we have another manuscript from Rostock. And look what I have outlined here. Um, the name is Siegmund Ein Ring. It is quite similar, to be sure, but there is no Eck in the end. Oh, but there's more. Here we have a manuscript from Glasgow, and the name changes again. Here it reads Siegmund M. Ring, not Ein Ring as before. Still no Eck in the end. So we have another variation of that fencing master's name. But in order to make matters even worse, I have another example for you, this time from a manuscript from Augsburg. And look what has happened here. The name changes again drastically to Siegmund Schinning or Schming or Schninnig or whatever. Uh, there is a small tittle over one of those strokes to make out, but the scribe has a tendency to, to uh, neglect to write those titles. And so a variety of readings are possible. So it gets a trifle confusing here, but this is by far not the end, because we have more manuscripts that feature this particular fencing master's name. These are, as far as I know, all of the seven occurrences of Master Siegmund's name. And I have arranged them somewhat in a chronological order, somewhat because uh, some datings of the manuscripts are not entirely clear. So let's have a look. The first three ones are from manuscripts we haven't seen so far, from manuscripts by fencing master Paulus Karl. And he is the one who mentions in the beginnings of his manuscripts the Gesellschaft der Lichtenauers, Lichtenauers Society, where he lists a number of fencing masters' names, and one of them is Master Siegmund. And now let's have a look what we can see here. The first example speaks of Meister Siegmund Amring. The second, the same, Meister Siegmund Amring, the manuscripts from Munich and Bologna. In the third one, the one from Vienna, it already says Meister Siegmund Emring, so we have an additional Umlaut, an Umlaut instead of the letter A. 
Well, occasionally the medieval or early Renaissance scribes had a tendency to 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 put some swashbuckling elements on their letters. So an additional dot or a tilde-like character or something of the kind. So this is not entirely unusual to have some additional dots over one letter. Nevertheless, it changes the sound of the letter A to E. Okay, next we have the four manuscripts we already have seen previously. M-ring is pronounced, well, as I said, M-ring in Vienna and Glasgow, well, it's the same sound, M-ring, M-ring. So the sound is the same, but the letter is different. The uh, A-umlaut, the E sound is um, replaced by the letter E, pronounced E like M-ring. The next evolutionary step is to add a tittle over the M in order to change it from M-ring to Einring, as we have seen in the Augsburg manuscript. And um, next we have um, our manuscript, the Sigmund Ringeck, the so-called Sigmund Ringeck manuscript, where we have uh, the Ein, which is retained, but it is separated from the second part of the name, which in return receives an additional Eck. And nobody actually so far knows where this obscure Eck suddenly appears from. Well, and the next and last step is the most curious one, as we have already seen. Why on earth did Ring Eck or Ein Ring or M Ring change to something entirely different, like Schming or Schinning? Well, I certainly don't have a clue, and I don't know whether anybody in the world has. As I said earlier, uh, Master Siegmund was the fencing master of Duke. Albert or Albrecht in the original German. And let's have a look at uh, how many Albrechts there actually are. So there are a few, four to be precise, and uh, they range from 1336 to 1508. And I'm um, considering the various approaches to dating our particular uh, Ringeck manuscript, uh, it is not entirely clear which of these manifold Albrechts is in fact the one that is mentioned in the introduction. Because the, the earliest dating was done in 1965 by Martin Wierschin, who dated the manuscript to the 1440s based on the paleography, so on the, on the style of the handwriting itself. And uh, later on, a couple of years ago, it was revised based on the watermarks to the beginning of the 16th century. And when we further take into consideration that the other manuscripts that are related to Master Siegmund are rather late, so the end of the 15th or beginning of the 16th century, it is quite likely that it is possibly the last of these Albrechts or Alberts that is referred to. But so far we have no absolute security who of these dukes, Count Palatins of the Rhine, was the one actually mentioned in the manuscripts. So we have to deal with quite a number of uncertainties when we look at our manuscript concerning both the author and the one it was dedicated to, or who at least is mentioned in the text um, as one of the, the dukes Master Siegmund was a fencing master for. And uh, now let's have a look at the text examples, because Master Siegmund Ring X manuscript, if you want to call it like this, um, is in a tradition that follows that of Grandmaster Johannes Lichtenauer. And uh, these manuscripts that rely on Lichtenauer's teachings um, are very, well, diverse, to say the least, and have a number of, well, of family lines that are more or, closely, more or less closely related. But now let's have a look into the manuscript. And um, we need to know that Master Siegmund 
relies on the teachings of Grandmaster Johannes Lichtenauer. That person a great deal of German sources rely on. And there are several tradition lines that rely on that specific master, on the teachings of Lichtenauer. And there are at least seven known traditional lines that are more or less similar to each other and among each other. And, uh, well, the line of Master Siegmund is one of them. A word of caution, the next slide will have a lot of text. In order to have this not going out of hand, I will concentrate on only three of these traditional lines. And these are the ones the practitioners of um, Lichtenauer's art are probably familiar with. These are the ones that go back to Master Siegmund, of course. Uh, to that of Master Peter von Danzig, if we want to stick to this familiar name for the time being, and that of Lev the Jew. This is the explanation of a technique called Durchwechseln, or changing through. And don't be afraid, you don't need to read that, actually. I just chose this example in order to, to show the diversity and the varying lengths of the, of the different traditional lines. So, and apparently the shorter version lacks a certain amount of detail. And as we can see, these traditional lines um, are, well, not entirely the same. The Peter von Danzig line is the earliest, from the 1450s, 1452 to be precise. Live the Jew is next. The first known manuscript is from roughly 1460. And as I said earlier, as far as the Sigmund Einring Egg manuscript is concerned, it is not entirely clear, but possibly it is dated to the beginning of the uh, 16th century. So we have a quite a considerable amount of variety in this passage alone. As we have seen earlier, there are four manuscripts that are related to Master Sigmund, whatever his last name may have been. And these are the manuscripts from Augsburg, Dresden, Glasgow, Rostock. And um, so we have four, but we can uh, get rid of one of them. And uh, in the following, you will uh, see a lot of, or a number of small abbreviations, Ziegler, which I have made. And uh, just in order to explain them briefly, Sigmund Emring from Glasgow is, um, is uh, called S.E., the manuscript from Rostock, belonging to Joachim Meyer, is called J.M. The one from Augsburg, Sigmund Schining, is called S.S. And finally, the one from Dresden, Sigmund Ein Ringeck, is called S.R. Just so that you can figure out what these abbreviations stand for. So please enjoy this brief passage about the fourth guard from Tag. And you will clearly see that we can exclude the ominous Siegmund Schinning. Well, he is a nuisance anyway. The other three manuscripts are surprisingly similar. I have collected another example from the Zwerhau or Tverhau, and I will let stand this here for a while so that you can really appreciate the similarity of these three sources. But please note, um, in the last section, in uh, S.E., Sigmund Engmring from Glasgow. In the next to last line, it says, als am nächsten Hanach gemalt steht. And that is because this manuscript actually is illustrated and we can see an image here. Just another note, there is uh, an abbreviation called J.M.A. A is, um, well, A is written there because actually that manuscript by Joachim Meyer has two versions of Master Lichtenauer's um, explanations and verses and glosses, and so I differentiated between version A and B there. That is not the perfect manuscript, and among the three, our manuscript, the Sigmund Ein Ringeck manuscript, is particularly sloppily written. It is full of, um, of, of deletions, of errors, of crossed out passages, of um, words that were forgotten by the scribe. And in order to really read this, well, it, it's, it's a mess. But 
then again. Well, let's have a look, let's have an overview of the three manuscripts and see what content is missing from what particular manuscript. I believe I'd better explain this. So we have a total number of techniques in the entirety of the, let's call it Master Siegmund tradition line. And when we look at the entirety, um, I have made a little square or rectangle for each and every technique. And the ones that are marked red are the ones that are missing in that particular uh, manuscript, but are existent in another one. And as we can see, although the Siegmund Ein Ringeck manuscript is particularly sloppily written and has many, many errors, it is nevertheless the most complete one. And um, when we look at the next one, the one from Rostock, belonging to Joachim Meyer, we see that it is quite red, so a lot of techniques and pieces are missing, but they are scattered throughout the entire manuscript, and well, one wonders how and where did he copy from, so that a lot of content is there, but almost half of it is missing. When we look at the last one, the one from Glasgow, the Siegmund M. Ring manuscript, it is notable that um, a lot of red in the beginning indicates missing portions, and that is only due to the circumstance that the first choirs of that manuscript are missing. So that manuscript, which, as I said earlier, is illustrated, starts actually with the Twerhau, or in the middle of the Twerhau section, and when we look at the far left top corner, um, the very beginning in this manuscript is put to the end. So actually that little square on the top left corner belongs right to the end. So as we can see, um, despite the fact that a lot of text or content is missing due to material loss, there are still portions equally missing. Interestingly, is it is that um, some of them come in pairs, which indicates a lost leaf or page, so that uh, verso and recto page, so the, the left side and the left, uh, right side of a page, are entirely missing. So the Ring Egg manuscript may still be a mess, but nevertheless it is the most complete one out of the three in this tradition line. In case you are already familiar with the Siegmund Einringeck manuscript, you certainly know that there are no images whatsoever. It is a text-only fight book. The one from Glasgow, as I said, is illustrated. It is completely illustrated in the longsword section throughout, and there's another illustrated section concerning wrestling. The rest, although, uh, or nevertheless, is not illustrated. When we look at the Joachim Meyer manuscript, well, um, in the text it refers to images, but there are none. Here we see uh, one example I have picked, and this is a very specific example because it is the only section in the Siegmund Einer Ring Egg manuscript where there is actually a reference to images. Sadly, the Joachim Meyer manuscript doesn't contain text in this particular section, but when we compare um, SR, Siegmund Einring Eck, to SE, Siegmund Emring from Glasgow, we see that uh, there is one identical passage, which I have highlighted in bold and italics here, which says, als am nesten gemeldet ist in the Siegmund Einringeck manuscript, whereas it says in the Glasgow version, als vor am nesten gemalt steht. So roughly translated as, uh, which is painted uh, hereafter. And uh, the curious thing is that als am nesten gemeldet ist in the Ringeck manuscript is the only passage where something like that is mentioned. In each and every single case where it says in the other manuscript, als am nächsten gemalt steht, or whatever, this passage has not been copied into the Siegmund and Ringeck manuscript. So this, uh, this one is uh, completely unique. This particular passage has been translated as 
as is reported hereafter or as it is written hereafter because uh, there is a similarity between gemalt and gemeldet and so the assumption was this is gemeld like gemeldet like annotated or mentioned or referred to so it is not entirely out of the way but when we compare this particular sentence to the one in the Glasgow version, it becomes quite clear that the scribe of the Dresden, our manuscript, in fact forgot to delete this particular passage like he did with all the others. So this is, uh, well, the, the only relic we have that the so-called Ringeck manuscript was or, or derives from a previously illustrated version, while it has no illustrations itself whatsoever. And in order to give you a brief impression of the magnificent artwork in the Glasgow manuscript, I have chosen this illustration, which shows a technique from the feeler, the faint, the failure. I think we all agree that this is really and truly outstanding craftsmanship. As I said earlier, the Ringeck manuscript does not particularly excel by the accuracy of its execution, and I just want to give you two brief examples in order to stress that point. In this example, we see that the scribe was particularly lazy and forgot to write half of the lines. And this passage has probably confused many practitioners that follow the teachings of Master Ringeck. Because here it says um, that you have to strike with the long edge from the long parting over and uh, you have to remain high with, uh, with the strike. And it remains a complete mystery what from the long parting actually means. When, however, we compare that particular passage to the other two, we instantly see that there is no such thing, but that the scribe of the Siegmund Einringeck manuscript just uh, was particularly confused and wrote Lange twice, and it is absent completely from the other two versions. So it's always advisable to have a look at, well, some sister manuscripts in order to clarify possible open questions. Okay, let us end on a conciliatory note. Honor to whom honor is due. I have three final examples that show that Master Siegmund Ein Ringeck was not that bad after all. In the first one, we see here highlighted in bold text that in some specific techniques, Master Siegmund is much more verbose than his counterparts in the other tradition lines. So I don't um, think you need to read that in total, it's just an example, and the next one is getting even better. Here, Master Siegmund offers quite a bit of information, whereas Master Peter von Danzig has only half of the text, and Leif the Jew offers none. But it gets even better, because in some instances, there is no text in the other tradition lines at all, and only Master Siegmund offers his insight about some specific techniques, how to perform them. So you see, the Ring Egg manuscript is an outstandingly lousy fight book. Nevertheless, it does have its few merits. Thanks for watching.